Welcome everybody to Dead Talk Live, and tonight our special guest is Owen Mackin, who new movie called The Cellar is coming out on Shutter April fifteenth. I have had the privilege of seeing a sneak peek, uh, seeing the movie. I loved it. Owen, thank you for being here. How are you doing today? I appreciate you for having me. Thank you very much. I am good. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm excited to chat with you. I've been a fan of yours for a while now. Uh, and this is very exciting. So let's go right to it. Let's talk about The Cellar. Uh, very interesting concept. We're going to get into it without giving away any spoilers. But how did it come your way? And was there anything about the script that really attracted you to this role? Wow. Well, um, so I don't, I don't know if you're familiar with, with Brendan's previous work. He's done a couple of really interesting films, like uh, Love Eternal and Pilgrimage. Um, and they're kind of, he does these kind of slightly off the wall type movies where he kind of really sort of pushes, pushes the boat out and some of those concepts. So I always wanted to work with Brendan. Um, and I did play a small part in one of his first films called Savage years and years and years ago. It was one of the first things I ever did. And we were looking forward to doing something again for a while. And then they sent me the script and I just, I, the same as, as, as you felt when you're watching the movie, I just thought it was really clever. I thought that kind of the pacing of it and the structure was really interesting. And I kind of just, the twists and how it built and what was a little bit different about it kind of got in my bones. And I, it, I always like to read horror scripts at nighttime mm -hmm. on my own. And then you kind of really know if they work and you kind of find yourself sitting there going, all right, okay, because as you know, it won't give any twist away, but there's something in the script and in the movie that that's kind of like inevitable. Yeah. And inevitable. And that's that's the stuff that really gets it gets in my brain. So. As a lifelong horror fan myself, especially enjoying the paranormal subgenre, uh, this movie surprised me in a very pleasant way. Uh, okay. Something unique and original that was great. Now, your co-star in the film is Alicia Cuthbert who is a yes. veteran actress, great actress. Uh, was this the first time you got to work with Alicia? Yeah, it was. I mean, I mean, I knew of Alicia, obviously, from like Girl Next Door and then from House of Wax. So I was, I was pumped to work with her. Uh, but it was really cool because we got to, um, you know, we were kind of lucky in a, in a weird way because of COVID because we had to be there two weeks early mm -hmm. and we had to stay in these little cottages which are right beside the, the house we were filming in the middle of nowhere. We weren't allowed to go anywhere. And the only person I was actually allowed to see or talk to was Alicia because wow. we arrived at the same time in our quarantines. So we could kind of sort of, you know, do these kind of little walks and stuff. So we, had, we got all this time to work on the character and spend some time with Brandon who was living next door. So we were kind of this weird horror bubble that you kind of almost thought would end up being a horror movie in itself. Like, put three people in the middle of these cottages in the middle of nowhere to make a horror film. You're like, well, one of us is going to probably die. <laughs> now the yeah. film has a backdrop in ireland did you guys actually film in ireland yeah yeah we filmed in a play in a little uh, place called ross common so it's on the west of ireland now uh you guys you and alicia have great uh chemistry you're a married couple uh in the film two kids now uh as in, in the first act of the film uh you know your character the dad is very close to both your kids. You're the good parent, let's say, for lack of a better term. And then we see uh, Ellie, who's played by Abby Fitz, uh, clashing with her mom, uh, Kira, who's played by Alicia. Uh, did you guys come up with that? I'm sh pretty sure it was in the script, but your dynamics in regards to your children uh, did they give you any kind of leeway with that, with how you interacted with them and what was shown on the screen? That, that's interesting. Yeah, on, honestly, it's all it's all down to Brendan because you know you always take your leave from the director. He, the director kind of runs it, and he, what myself and Alicia wanted to do was try and make it seem that we we were married for a long time. So everything was kind of with glances and looks. We didn't need to overly communicate. And the little kids, like like Abby and Dylan, were great. So it was all it was more just about us having having that kind of bond where you didn't you could sort of say things unspoken yeah and that's also that's also the kind of calmness that brendan wanted to imbue in the movie as well and i think you know when you when you watch it you realize that he's got all these really clever beats and moments where you just kind of suck you in and so you just trust him to kind of say you, you trust what he wants and you just kind of follow that sort of that sort of tone absolutely so kind of, that is down that path 
now Brian uh, in the film, when uh, the daughter disappears because of the problems between mom and daughter, you really, your character really believed that she ran away. Okay, she had done yeah, it in the. See, I don't have kids, so I was like, she'll come back. You know, they're like boomerangs. I was like, it's fine. <laughs> I have three teens, so yeah, I could totally see why Brian would think that. But uh, so you're like, okay, she ran away, she'll come back. But then you have Alicia's character, who, uh, who I guess you could call it mother's intuition, feels that something is off, something is wrong, that she not, she did not just run away. Uh, when you were getting in that mindset and you, you, you and Alicia had a lot of scenes together where you were trying to convince her there's no foul play here, she just ran off, she'll be back. Uh, did you talk to anybody to get into that mindset to portray it like a dad who really thought his daughter was just acting up? So it's interesting. I mean, I, I don't have kids, um, so but I have like a younger brother and sister, so I kind of sort of parlayed it into that, that feeling. But my perspective from a personal point of view to bring it into the character was the fact that, I don't know about you, but I believe in ghosts. Oh, me too. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. So I've been in a couple of places that have been haunted. And it's one of those weird things where retrospectively you tell somebody the stories what happened and it almost sounds a little bit mundane or almost slightly stupid. Mm -hmm. Like what? But when these things are actually genuinely happening, it's it's I've had to move out of an apartment before and you're like, this is all this is not okay. But trying to explain it to somebody who doesn't experience it is almost impossible. It right? is. Because yeah. So that's kind of how I approached it in terms of pretend sort of seeing it from Alicia's point of view or or, or a character's point of view. Like you can't, it's almost impossible to explain to somebody the sort of supernatural paranormal that's going on when they aren't a, aren't a party to it. And that's even scarier because like you seem even more isolated because, you know, you know I, why would he believe it if he hasn't experienced it? Yeah, right? yeah. So, and it's always, you know, as viewers, when we're watching somebody who's experiencing something paranormal and nobody believes them the closest family members and you try to put yourself like in this case kira's the alicia's character situation where nobody believes you and just how isolating that must feel the worst the worst i i, I you just made me realize i have a really good friend of mine right who i was staying down in limerick a couple of years ago filming a show called night flyers and i stayed in this little cottage and I was convinced it was haunted. And I was like, you know, you get drawn into a place where you're like, I have to stay here, but I know I shouldn't. And it's weird. And so you always stay there. <laughs> and I ended up, it's, it's, it's ridiculous, right? So I ended up like getting plants, changing the furniture, putting up some fairy lights and stuff. And I was like, all right, there, but there's one corner in the room that had this chair. And I just didn't want to move that chair. And my buddy came down and he's like a big guy and he does a lot of sports and he came down so he could play some football with all the crew and then he's going to stay overnight and hang out. He's going to come on set the next day. And he walks into the apartment. We came down to play football with for dinner and he came in and he stood there in the cottage and I, I went into the kitchen and I came out and he was still standing there. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go home. And it's a two and a half hour drive back to Dublin. And it's like 11 o'clock at night. And I was like, what are, you, what, what, what are you talking about? He's like, I'm going to go home. I was like, no, 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 no. Why? And he goes, I just... I just don't, you know, I'm just going to go home. And I was like, it's, there's, there's something in, in that corner, right? And he goes, yeah, the chair. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not staying here. Wow. And I was like, I was like, oh my God. But then he left and I was left sitting in this, this, this cottage going, great. And fucking fantastic. You know, he's left. I'm now live here. And, and yet when you tell that story to the people who's not me and him, they're like, that's just ridiculous. Why would he drive home two and a half, three hours? And they're like, because weren't there there was something there that's just the way it is and you had that intuition as well before he even came over that there was something off at the place yeah. and that and I, I know yeah yeah and that probably validated your feelings what he felt as yeah. well now brian in the movie uh his big pivot moment is when he picks up that sledgehammer and tries to destroy the part of the basement that holds that equation uh that's when he's like wait a minute something's off here uh you could see it in the way your facial expressions work out and then how your character shifts after that you don't say much it's really done through a lot of body movement facial expressions as opposed to you coming out to your wife kira and saying oh my god you're right 
something is definitely off here. Uh, was that something that you really had to work hard on? Uh, did, did the director lead you in how he wanted your body movements and your expressions to work out? No, you know, I think I think with that, it kind of, almost like the story I just told you, I kind of have had these feelings before. So I was like, this just kind of feels right to me. This is how he suddenly realizes something going on. And, but no, but Brendan is also very specific. Like this is, this is the, the beautiful thing about this movie is like there's certain movies that are like very, you know, well-crafted from the directorial point of view. And that's what Brendan did. Everything he did, every shot choice, every kind of piece of dialogue, like he allowed us a lot of latitude in terms of figuring it out and, and making sure we had space and giving us this sort of time. Um, but at the same time, he knew what he wanted. Mm -hmm. So. He kind of he kind of he kind of guided us towards all that in terms of even the pacing going up and down staircases all that stuff. So when you're watching this movie, this is like very much like Brendan really crafted this movie in his vision. So that's kind of how it worked out. Another fascinating aspect of this film is in a lot of other movies of the same subgenre, you don't get to really see a visual depiction of the demon, the devil, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I thought it was brilliantly done the way they did kind of show us uh, what it looks like. What were your thoughts on that? I mean, I hadn't seen the movie until South by Southwest, and I hadn't, I, I'd seen the, the, the puppet of the creature or kind of what they built. They built this full figure creature that was really tall. It was like six and a half feet tall, I think. Mm -hmm. so it was, like, but, you know, when you're on set, it's, it's never, it's imposing, but it's, you know, it's, it's like, you know, it's like being in the kind of adult Disney world, you know. But when I saw it on camera, the way he did it, it scared the hell out of me. And I wasn't expecting it. And I thought he did a really great job because you don't show too much, but you show literally one of the scariest things that's all embedded in our mind. And I thought they, I thought they created that imagery, like, really powerfully. It, yeah. It, 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 got, it got me. It got, if I saw that, I'd be like, I'm, I'm leaving the country. That's very well. What are your feelings in regard to more this these days independent filmmakers uh, in the horror genre don't end it on a the good guys win type of an ending like studio films, big market studio films like Warner Brothers and so on and independent filmmakers are sort of changing the narrative when it comes to the ending of horror movies, paranormal movies where no, good does not win, evil actually wins. What are your feelings for in regards to that? I don't, I mean, not that I like the idea that the evil wins, but I, I like the idea that you're uncertain, because sometimes you watch movies and if you already know it's going to have a positive outcome, you're not as invested sometimes, right? Because you, you kind of know it's going to end, end well, so you don't kind of feel on edge. And I think, I think it has to be very specific to what the movie is, but I think with this, because it's kind of almost this consuming inexorable force that you cannot escape from mm -hmm. in a different way that that i think that surely works really well for this type of movie because it also it, it kind of forces you to consider it in a way that's even more horrifying afterwards yeah when you think about now you know, I, I, I got sorry i gotta ask you in the movie uh your family buys a house at auction on scene and that's that's done regularly uh you get it at a rock bottom price, but you don't get to see the property beforehand. You, Owen Mackin, would you ever do that? Buy a property not, you've never seen? Not, not anymore. No, I don't, I don't think so. Not after this movie. No. Yeah, yeah. It's a, like a <laughs> lesson would, learned. Would you, would you do it after no. hearing all these movies? No, <laughs> hell no. My wife well, took us... You definitely should not do it. <laughs> no. My wife took us to a, a bed and breakfast a couple of months ago for our anniversary. And this was out in the woods in the middle of nowhere. And the whole ride out there, driving through the backwoods of Virginia, I'm like, we're going to die. We're going to die. A lot of horror movies. I've have... seen this movie and I've seen this movie. <laughs> we're doing all these movies right now. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, uh, as far as the backstory between Brian and Akira, your guys' characters, you could tell there was some friction. There might have been some marital problems in the past. In the in the time that you and Alicia had in quarantine, uh, did you have any kind of detailed discussions on building a backstory that was not in the script, but to help you guys portray the characters a little better? 
Yeah, so so that that was what was really helpful about the fact they were in that in the sort of cottage situation next door in that quarantine because we actually had something that you don't always have in a movie. You never really have that much time before shooting something just to spend together, and we got some time to kind of talk about it and craft it. And, and same with Brendan. So it was actually quite helpful being in a COVID situation because we weren't able to go anywhere. We we're stuck together any free time. We were all kind of together next to the next to the house. So it actually kind of was almost relaxing in a weird way mm -hmm. because it gave us time to just foster that dynamic. And then we got to kind of like just as people get to know each other quite well, so it became just very easy. Very nice. Uh, now, you're no stranger to horror. You right. were in Resident Evil, uh, the final chapter. Uh, so compared to some of your other roles in horror, like let's take Resident Evil, action movie, right. action horror, and now you go into this movie. It's a horror movie, no doubt. More of the psychological nature. Uh, is it completely different dynamics when it comes to doing your character? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, totally. I mean, like, so. I mean, I, I love working working with Paul and Mila. They're two of my favorite people on the planet. And but it's it's a very different vibe because you know Paul Paul has got these big set piece plans and you're kind of you're doing a big action movie and it's kind of slightly high octane all the time and it's like it's fun and you know it, it's it's a Brendan's movie is a bit more cerebral and the kind of it's a bit more intimate so it's a different kind of pacing and a different kind of way of kind of finding your character and obviously you're playing somebody different but it is a different sort of tenor you know so I couldn't say which one I prefer because I, I I loved working with Resident Evil because uh Honestly, that was one of the most invigorating and enjoyable filming experiences I've ever had. Um, but with the cellar, there was a beautiful intimacy because a lot of it's myself and Alicia and Brendan, and you're kind of getting this kind of really nicely crafted moments, which is quite fun as well. So it kind of just depends. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Uh, moving forward in your career, like I said, you've done a nice spectrum of different movies and roles. You've done a lot of horror, a lot of different stuff. Do you want to just keep exploring and pushing the boundaries uh, in regards to your acting and just seeing how many different types of roles you can tackle? Yeah, I, I you know, I've been lucky. I think I've been lucky that, like, you know, first and foremost, I just, you know, always lucky just to go to work. Uh, but secondly, I just like making, I like making stories. So if I'm not working, I like to just go and try and direct something or make something with my friends or do something. So I'm, I just want to make cool things with cool people and try and explore different types of stories and characters. It doesn't matter if it's a, you know, I don't know, drama or sci-fi or fantasy. I kind of sort of always go down the sort of, you know, sci-fi, fantasy, horror route. I think, it, I think that's also what I, what, what I like to watch and what I like to read. Mm -hmm. so, so I just kind of gravitate towards that, I guess, and that's just what happens. So, and you do have uh, quite a few directing, producing, writing credits. Is that something also you would like to further explore? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have that's what I'm doing next. I, I have another project that is sort of not quite horror, but it's called it's sort of in the kind of vein of the stuff that, that I made before, which is what I'm doing next year. So, yeah, I just, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Oh, and I want to thank you so much for your time. Uh, for our viewers, the movie is called The Cellar. It is premiering April 15th on Shudder. It's by RLG Films. It's great. Uh, obviously, we don't give away spoilers, especially before a movie is released. But if you're a fan of horror, if you're a fan of the paranormal genre, you're going to see stuff in The Cellar that you're not expecting. And I guarantee you have not seen before in a movie in the same genre so please check it out april 15th on shutter i want to thank our guest owen mackin i want to thank our viewers who are tuning in live and those who will be watching this later on owen do you have any final thoughts you want to share before we go no it just has been really enjoyable talking to you and uh and yeah don't go don't go buy a house but you know, <laughs> you know i'm going with the previous owners of course Ab absolutely if you walk away with anything from this interview do not buy a house sight unseen thank you guys on behalf of owen and myself stay safe and stay walking good night everybody okay.